Okay, so here we have the Gigabyte B450i or it's Pro Wi-Fi. So as the name suggests, it's an AM4 board uh, with B450 chipset. It's an ITX um, form factor. So you have your two DIMM slots, your single PCIe slot. Um, they do market this, Gigabyte markets this here as a uh, thermal armor for your um, NVMe drive. Um, yeah, that doesn't really do anything. Um, some people have their drives uh, throttling sometimes. Maybe this will help, maybe it won't. Uh, it's mostly just for show. It matches the VRM heat sink. And for the VRM heat sink, we have a four plus two phase. So four phase for the V core and a two phase for the SOC voltage. And that's a 50 amp power stages. So you should be good with all the way up to eight cores. We'll do some uh, thermal testing on this. Uh, we're gonna overclock it. Um, this is a 1500X, so it's gonna be on a little bit of the low side, uh, temperature wise, but it should give you a rough idea uh, whether you need to put a fan or something on here. So for the back side of the board, we have four USB 3.0s, two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports. We got some Wi-Fi and we got some audio jacks. Um, there's also a video out, so if you're using an APU, uh, we have HDMI display port and CMOS battery here. I don't know if you can see it, this seems to be a new thing that they're doing with most of the ITX boards recently. So instead of having a battery on the board, um, they just kind of stash it away here. So we're going to uh, overclock this, get some thermals, take a look at the BIOS. Um, and see what the board uh, can do. Okay, so here we have the BIOS. And the first tab when you go to the BIOS is just CPU settings. Uh, so frequency settings, memory. So if we go into that, we can see we have multiplier options, X and P and just power states. And something that stands out with this board, I think, because this isn't a top of the line chipset for AMD, so it's the B series, but you still have all these timings and stuff to play with with memory, which uh, really lets you overclock your memory pretty well. There is no um, RTLs or super advanced memory overclocking on here. Uh, but you really don't need that. So this is pretty cool. We have um, Customized fan curves in the BIOS so you don't have to use like uh, Corsair's crappy software that creates issues or Some other third-party software. You can just make a custom fan curve in here um, It's still somewhat limited um, But it's still way better than a lot of other BIOS options and of course we have your RGB customization um, so you can customize the RGB on the actual motherboard. There's just like five or six LEDs on the edge of the board. Um, for people that are into LEDs, you have that. And you have NVMe RAID, but there's only one NVMe slot on this board. So unless you're getting a PCI Express uh, card where you can put uh, multiple NVMe drives, this option is kind of superfluous doesn't really do anything just because you can't put more than one on the board so you can't really raid anything so that's the BIOS it's pretty good it's not sluggish or anything it moves back and forth pretty well I will say that everything is in menus of menus so you have to go to your menu up here then you have to okay I want to edit memory settings so then you have to do that and uh, it's okay, it's just, maybe it's that I'm not used to Gigabyte, it just seems like a slow way to navigate a BIOS, instead of like overclocking. Okay, then you have all your overclocking options on the overclocking tab, for example. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's no real complaint. It has a bunch of options, everything you'd want, really, uh, for an everyday build and uh, even some more that you might not even touch. So the BIOS I think is a good BIOS.
So let's get into uh, VRM testing. Okay, it's been a while. We can see temperatures have sort of risen. So there's no airflow over this. Um, so the heat sink is at 42, 43 degrees, and say 42 for the inductors. And our ambient's risen a little bit here to 21.3. And if we pan over here, um, I think the reason for the, the such uh, close temperatures is this cryo rig cooler here is actually going downwards towards the board and it's cooling off the inductors. Um, so that's why the VRM is a little bit cooler than it would be. Now the, the parts of the VRM directly under the heatsink will be hotter, but I've been monitoring it in hardware info, which given it's not the best, most accurate thing ever, um, it says they're about R62 and 59C. So I'm guessing those temperatures are actually under the heatsink. So just on a side note, the CPU cooler, this is the Cryrig C7. This is loud and uh, I didn't expect it to be this loud because I had it on an Intel board and it wasn't hardly loud at all. Um, I'm thinking it has to do with the fan curve in the motherboard. And uh, it's cooling it all, the CPU off quite well, but the CPU is just a quad core um, at 1.35 volts. So something to keep in mind with this board, maybe adjust the fan curve to be a little bit more conservative. Especially if you have a bigger cooler, you don't need a super hyper aggressive fan curve because this thing's keeping the CPU cool just fine. Okay, so something in hardware info I wanted to show you guys, and uh, this is kind of cool. Um, we actually have labeled temperatures. So we have like VRM, uh, MOS, so for MOSFET, uh, VCOS, VSOC MOSFET. Um, and it just gives you the temperatures of the VRM. Um, and we have all these other voltages actually labeled, temperatures actually labeled. And it's just kind of nice to have temperatures that are labeled in hardware info um, and not having to try and decode what that temperature is based on what you think it is. So like, oh, the VRM should be running this hot or this cold as opposed to say the PCIe slot or the, the chipset uh, temperature. So I thought that was a cool touch for this motherboard. Um, maybe it's just because I'm not used to actually having labels in hardware info. So that was pretty cool. Okay, so that was the benchmarks on this board. And this is a pretty decent board. Um, you know, I'm coming from uh, Intel. I do a lot of things with Intel boards. And, uh, you know, with B450, it's, it's kind of the lesser chipset. But it, the BIOS is fully featured. There's no issue with overclocking. And uh, I was sort of expecting kind of a gimped board. Um, but, no, this is actually really good. Um, so this board is... 120 ish dollars depending on where you get it in the US um, I paid 150 because just where I'm at uh, new stuff is expensive so we used a four core in this I used a four core in this and if you're going to be using a six core eight core you're probably going to need a bigger heat sink which means tower heat sink which means you're not gonna have anything blowing on the VRM so you're gonna probably want to set up a fan um, so at the back of the case, or blowing down to get on these heat sinks, especially if you're overclocking um, stock, this thing should be fine probably, uh, because we were using a lot of voltage with this. So stock VRMs are probably okay. And I really had no issue with this board at all. So if you're looking for a ITX board uh, for AM4, this is definitely a really good one. Gigabyte does have a the higher tier chipset, um, an ITX form factor, but as I see it, there's no real point in getting it. Um, this has all the options you would possibly need for an everyday um, build, and it's a good little motherboard. So that's been the review for the Gigabyte B450 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. If you liked it, leave a comment, uh, suggestion down below, and see you next time. Bye.